Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the brand new Oris Aquas line for 2024, talking about all the details and what's new with the refresh of this collection. So if you're new here, this is a channel where we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on these dive watches, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions or looking to buy these watches, check out the link in the description down below to the product pages. But without further ado, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. So Auras probably needs very little introduction if you are a regular viewer of content around here. This independent brand has well over a century of history to claim as its own, residing in its Swiss German hometown of Holstein, roughly a 30 minute drive outside of Basel. To this day, Oris operates independently from any larger luxury group, making them one of the few exceptions in an industry that has become predominantly consolidated. Among their storied collections that span decades, their best-selling product line is their 21st century development with the Aquas, the professional dive watch that for years has set a standard for its price range on what a watch of the genre should feel like. The Aquas has followed a familiar form since the beginning, although the collection has never shied away from trying some unconventional takes from the likes of countless limited editions, their extreme depth gauge and professional oriented options, all while serving as the first horological vessel containing the brand's manufactured caliber 400. The Aquas was steady in its presentation, being versatile, offering exceptional finishing, and a variety that would be enough to satiate mostly everyone in the watch enthusiast crowd. However, Oris felt that there were small but many details to change in order to make the line feel even better. And for 2024, they've updated the entire lineup. So I have many of the collection in front of me here. So let's go through what is new and then talk about the general details that might be familiar, but are still important to discuss. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking similar to what I thought when I first quickly looked at these watches asking, so what is actually new? These appear very similar to the previous Aquas, and while that is the truth, there are many changes to discuss. Taking a step back, the new collection comes in with three specific case size options, a 43.5 millimeter case option in different colors, including an updated upcycle model, a blue dial and a green dial with these containing the caliber 400 with rubber strap options being available for two of the dial colors in the same case diameter, but this time with the Salita base caliber 733, Oris adds an additional black dial to the offering. At 41 and a half millimeters, they come in with the same collection of dial colors as the Salita powered lineup for the 43 and a half. And then finally, you have the 36 and a half millimeter options with a black dial, a mother of pearl dial, and a unique size specific upcycle version. A point that I would like to call attention to is that Oris decided to keep two different movement options for this collection. With the strong and successful push towards the caliber 400, I did think that we might be seeing the end to these Salita powered watches that came in at a more attainable price by comparison, despite not delivering all the bells and whistles of their caliber 400 series. But this move seems to put to rest that concern that there will only be one point of entry for movements for this brand, which I appreciate as it gives a collector a choice on what makes the most sense for them. As I have alluded to, the changes on the surface with these watches are harder to detect, but let's go through them one by one to give a sense to what you're getting with the 2024 refresh. I am mostly going to be speaking about the 43 and millimeter and the 41 and millimeter options, given that these were the sizes I was able to get my hands on to spend more time with, and I will specify when a change is isolated to only one of the sizes as we're going through. Starting with the structure of the case, there are a few areas to direct our attention towards. First, with the crown guards and lugs, both of which have been reworked in their profile. The crown guards are going to be tapered further to create a slight change in the refinement in the silhouette while maintaining their intended purpose of protection. The lugs have been sculpted while continuing to meet the bracelet and ultimately the wrist in a cohesive manner. And then the bracelet has also received some updates, including a wider brush center link while featuring a heavier taper down to 16 millimeters along its journey to the clasp. For the 43 and half millimeter caliber 400 versions, they get a notable point of separation beyond the benefits of the five day spec out movement with the inclusion of Oris's new quick adjustment clasp and their quick change strap system, both patented by the brand. The ceramic bezel remains with its clean inlay of indications that elevate its presentation. However, the proportions of the bezel have been adjusted, scaling down the size of the bezel markings. The dial also received some refreshes, including mild updates to the hour markers. The alpha hands at center are going to be slimmed down, favoring elegance, and the dial typography has been updated to a modern approach. Since we are speaking about the Aquas date, the date window is also an area of discussion, as now all of these models will feature a color match date wheel within the open 
aperture. That includes all dial colors, even the recycled plastic dials of the upcycle. The final change surrounding these watches are not with the products, but with the packaging. With the 2024 Aquas packaging aligning with the broader sustainable initiative of the brand, with more than half of the box being able to be recycled. And that about does it with the changes. And yes, indeed, very small changes. But when you have a product that works, it was clear that Oris was not in the business of reinventing a product from the ground up, more so identifying key attributes that help deliver small points of improvement and change. From here, much of the standard features remain. Looking at the wearing dimensions, starting with a 43 and a half millimeter diameter, we have a thickness of 12.9 millimeters and a lug to lug of 50.8 millimeters. The 41 and a half millimeter diameter comes in with a thickness of 12.9 millimeters and a lug to lug of 48.5 millimeters. Similar to the previous examples of the Aquas, all of them wear smaller than their proposed diameter given the integrated design of the bracelet that is going to be forgiving and shooting straight down and around the wrist. With the 43 and a half millimeter wearing closer to the typical 42 to 42 two and a half millimeter case and the 41 and a half wearing closer to a 40 to 40 and a half millimeter case. The bezels remain with their unidirectional 120 click. The loom offers solid utility, though not the best you're going to come across. And the case is finished exceptionally for the price. The screwed in links of the bracelet feature brushing and polishing with a similar theme coming with the central case with the sculpted edge of the lugs and the bezel and crown edges being polished while the case sides and lug tops all exhibit brushing. All the Aquas date models shown here come with 300 meters of water resistance, offering a similar theme in their dial seen underneath their sapphire crystals, with the color options utilizing a sunburst finish with a darkened vignette perimeter. The oddballs are going to be with the upcycle models, which feature dials made from recycled ocean plastic, a concept that has been refreshed with the new rollout of the Aquas here. I find many of the corporate pushes around sustainability coming off as forced rather than actually being thoughtful attempts. This though is a rarer and cooler exception, being a product that represents presents a brand focused initiative and creates a unique product for a collector with a dial that is unlike anything else. And when I say that, I mean it as even among the upcycled dials, each one of these will not be the same as any other, giving each example an independent character that will be exclusive to their owner and serves as a strange fusion of contradicting ideas. A luxury watch with a dial made of, well, trash. Now the clasp on all the watches are well done with the Caliber 400 making use of that updated micro adjustment system and the Sleeta base models coming with a two button release clasp from milled components and three points of micro adjustment. The quick change system on the straps in the Caliber 400 models is also a nice touch, making swapping between bracelet and strap an easier endeavor. From here, let's talk about the two movement options you have, the Aorus Caliber 400 and the Aorus Caliber 733, which uses a industrialized SW200 base. Now, starting with the latter of the two, Salita is a third-party producer of Swiss-made calibers that is probably seen as the second most recognizable name from this nation when it comes to producing calibers, only behind ETA. This considered, they have had an explosive growth in the past decade, with big thanks coming from independent brands like Oris, who indirectly championed their movements by using them in hundreds of thousands of watches. The movements are available with easy viewing through the Sapphire Crystal, getting the customized red rotor that has become emblematic of these calibers housed within Oris watches. In general, they operate at 4 hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour, while featuring hacking and hand winding. Hacking stopping the seconds when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and achieves a power reserve of 38 hours. The movements are not going to deliver any Anything out of the ordinary when it comes to their specifications, although the movements are among the most widely used in the entire industry, giving confidence to their reliability. On the other side, you have the Caliber 400, a movement that marks a new era for Oris in a variety of ways, while delivering specifications on paper that are the best the entire industry has to offer for its sub $4,000 price. With its appearance, the Caliber has a uniform blasted finish across its bridges and a hollowed out line brush rotor. Powering the Caliber, you will see double barrels providing a 120 hours or five days of power reserve. The escapement is highly resistant to magnetic fields with a new silicon anchor and escapement wheel. And when the movement was exposed to 2,250 gauss during testing, timing deviation was around 10 seconds a day, easily passing the 30 seconds a day at 200 gauss requirement for ISO 764 standards for an anti-magnetic movement. Not only is the movement accurate under duress, it is going to be tested at five different positions as marked on the movement itself. Aura says the watch will be accurate within 
COSC specs at minus three to plus five seconds a day while operating at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. And keep in mind, COSC calls for minus four to plus six seconds a day. By any metric, the claim capabilities presented by the Caliber 400 are impressive, offering a 10 year warranty for those who register their watch with my Auris, an unheard of level of backup from a major brand in terms of after sales support. I think the biggest question for these calibers is simply how new they are. Having not had the same opportunity to prove themselves over the course of decades, like so many other popular calibers on the market. I think the most common quoted issue in the past when these were first rolled out were going to be the minute hand jumping that could happen when you push the crown back into its first position following setting the time. This was being created by a slight drag with a gear and opinion that were going to be disengaging. In this example here, as well as in other caliber 400s as of late, this seems to have been improved, which is great news because on paper, these are legitimately some of the most compelling movements under $5,000 in all of watchmaking. All right, so now let's unpack looking a little bit more at this Aorus Aquas 2024. Some of my thoughts, some of the considerations I would think would spring to mind for a potential suitor or buyer that are looking at this for the first time. I think the first thing that stands out for me is these are nice updates, but they're very small updates. So I think with the updating of a line for an Aquas, I think there will be some people that will come away from this thinking that, okay, this is very small. The Caliber 400 does have more things going for it now with some of these additional features with the bracelet and strap options, which I think do make that more of a compelling package. But if you're an owner of a previous Aquas model, probably not enough here to want to entice you to get the latest version. If you wanted to go for a Caliber 400 model, that might be a different story. But if you're an owner of a previous generation Salita model, it's not going to make much sense to transition into buying this Aquas, even though I do think some of the small touches are nice details. But then you shift over to, you know, what is new? And then you just talk about what the Aquas is and what it has been for many years. The Aquas to me represents some of the best value and finish for the dollar amount for any dive watch. It's versatile, it's legible, great water resistance, different case sizes to choose from, although we do not have a 39 and a half millimeter case option, at least at this point. You also are getting different dial colors to choose from in this instance, also with some updated upcycle models and having the flexibility of picking between the Caliber 400 and the Salita models. I was slightly convinced internally that the Caliber 400 was going to be the only option for the Aquas in the future. It seemed like that was the direction they were going, but I am happy to see that the Salitas are not done just yet because I think one of the points of interest for Oris and why people connect with this brand is the flexibility you have as a collector to decide both on price, but also just specifications. What do you prefer more and where do you sit? The Oris Aquas in many regards is a luxury product, but Oris has always with their independent flair had this ability to be approachable despite all of these things that would typically be associated with luxury products. In addition for the Caliber 400 models, you have the power reserve and the quoted spec, which I think are really some of the best in class that you're going to come across. There are not many other five day power reserve movements in the industry, but that's really my take on the Oris Aquas 2024. It is basically the same feeling that I had about the Aquas 2023 and the years previously, except you're getting some small touches of refinement, even more the case with the Oris Aquas Caliber 400. And I think if you're a brand and you're trying to update a model that has become a representing idea of a dive watch in its price range, you probably don't need to reinvent the thing from the ground up. And that's what Oris did, small touches to give the Aquas new life in the years going forward. All right, guys, that's all we have for this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Really do appreciate that. Also check out teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to manage all of our productions on our main channel, as well as here, is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market for a watch, we know you can buy a watch from a lot of different places nowadays, but it allows us to keep doing what we're doing here. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.